the selector is just picking a value from the list of ISO speeds. Now, let's just make sure that we still have a um, picture on the camera. So maybe I'll just change. Actually, yeah, let's, let's go back to a shutter speed we can better understand and have some kind of ISO uh, speed here and also turn the iris a little bit off. So, okay, we have, we have a picture now from the camera. This is great. Today we'll look at how Skahoy's new Blue Pill platform works with red cameras. We have a red Komodo camera here today. We are also very close to bringing out support for V-Raptor. And this collaboration with red has been amazing. During the year 2021, we have worked with them to bring this support out. It has already been proven on big productions and uh, with really challenging uh, cases as well, like stereoscopic capture and multiple cameras involved. So it has been on the road, it has been tested there, and now finally we can bring it into your hands. And it also involves new products from Skahoy. So we have the RCP Pro, which is this uh, controller we have right here from Skahoy that has the blue pill built into it. So this device talks directly with the camera, at the end of this video, we will also talk about how the Blue Pill, which is a, a little server product from Skahoy that has this platform inside of it, will enable your existing Skahoy RCPs like the RCP V2 to talk to Red Komodo cameras. So that's some of the goodies that I have for you today in this video. We'll get right to a demonstration of the Red Komodo camera. And if you own this camera, you already know what parameters you want to control. We have them in the web UI of the camera. So in this demonstration, I want to make sure that you understand how those parameters you can control via the web GUI are available on tactile knobs right at your fingertips with a um, Skahoy RCP Pro like this one. So we have a little configuration over here um, or set up with uh, some targets for us to, uh, to work with and on the RCP, we would usually operate out of the home screen. So one of the concepts that um, am, uh, deployed on Skahoy RCPs, uh, typically with Blue Pill, is having a home screen navigation-wise that give you access to the most important things. So if you look in the display here, you see things like offset red, green, and blue. You have the color temperature of your camera, at exposure adjustments, ISO, shutter speed, and focus. I think one of the first thing we may want to do is to work a little bit with the focus of the camera, but I also want to bring your attention over to the web interface because uh, here we have a page with settings and Red has divided this so you have access to shading settings in here and we'll get back to that just shortly. But if we go to the lens tab of the UI, you find information about the lens. Currently we have a um, digital uh, SLR camera lens attached to the Komodo. So it's it's not a broadcast lens and it's not super fancy, but it is controlled by the camera. And that is important today. Uh, for instance, we can adjust the iris of the camera with the joystick on the RCP Pro. You see that it's stepping. Why? Because the lens is stepping. The lens does not have a smooth iris, unfortunately. That's what you get with the DSLR lens. But um, we can still control it and we do control the actual values. So the f-stop values you see here on the joystick display and hey, by the way, joystick display, this is a new thing on the RCP Pro from Skahoy, a custom made joystick, super innovative with a display on top to show you the value of Iris or Master Black, depending on your configuration. You can put any kind of information into this display, just like you're used to do on your Skahoy controllers. So that's great. So the uh, joystick here on top uh, will let us adjust the Iris, but stepping because of the lens. So you can expect something else if the lens doesn't have discrete iris values. You also see it reflected in the interface actually. So as I'm moving the joystick, you see the iris position is changing in the interface. And I would also be able to do the opposite back to the camera. If I'm moving the slider here, you also see the values are changing here. Although they look like they're higher uh, resoluted, it's not the case. It's still a stepping iris on the lens. Focus position is another thing. If I drag this slider in the interface, you know that our picture will get out of focus if it was in focus. So uh, you can see that right away. 
And the same values are available up here in the display on uh, the Skahoy controller. We use the 16-bit value coming from the camera and we can adjust it with the associated knob here. So let's just see if we can pull the focus on this image. We can definitely see something happening and my screen is a little bit far away so I'm not really sure if I'm there. But I want to uh, bring to your attention how the um, Blue Pill platform um, will let you adjust the values. It's a huge range, right? So we are, uh, it's um, 65,000 values. If I turn really quickly, you see how quickly I can move through this range because we have acceleration on our encoders if you apply it to a parameter. So I can really quickly move in this range. But I also do have course mode enabled, but I can disable that. So with the click of a button, there's a little icon here that disappears. And now as I'm moving, it goes a little bit slower, but you can still see the acceleration of the parameter. If I click one at a time, you see, then it adjusts in steps of about 100, which is fitting for fine grained focus. Interesting, right? That the way we control the focus parameter is done by an accelerating um, or accelerator detection on the encoder. So that's just one of the features that is found inside the blue pill integrations in many cases. You may not always need that, but for shutter speed, you would like the same. So let's just see shutter speed here. So we go to these settings and we will um, go to the menu and see if we can find shutter speed somewhere in here in the menu of settings. Um, maybe in here. Yep, there we go. Shutter speed. And you can have shutter speed in two different flavors on the Komodo. And this is really because the Komodo works this way. You can either have it in degrees or um, fractions of a second, right? We have it in degrees right now. So you see the value in the web interface corresponds to the one in the displays and the associated encoder will let me change this value. So now I am at 360 and then I can go, of course, all the way down. Once again, if I move the encoder uh, fast, then I have an accelerated approach. If I move it really slowly, then I go by the digits. Um, so really fine grained control, but you can see just turning a little bit quicker, I go faster. So once again, super cool integration. The way we make you change between degrees and fractions of a second is by pressing the encoder. And now we are at fractions of a second and see what happened in the web interface. Um, we are changing that setting in the camera so that both the RCP and the web interface will actually reflect this. But you can see the magic is happening here. So um, adjusting the shutter speed, it's the same thing that we can also see accelerated changes. ISO is another one. We have a, generally a fixed list of ISO speeds in the camera um, right here to choose from. And in this case, the selector is just picking a value from the list of ISO speeds. Now, let's just make sure that we still have a um, picture on the camera. So maybe I'll just change. Actually, yeah, let's, let's go back to a shutter speed we can better understand and have some kind of ISO uh, speed here and also turn the iris a little bit off. So, okay, we have we have a picture now from the camera. This is great. Now, uh, so that's some of the things you find on the home screen. Exposure adjustment is like a, a bias that will make your image light, um, lighter or darker um, right here as well. Um, let me see. In this case, we also have larger steps. In this case, you see that the change between having uh, fine and coarse mode is uh, whether we go by one tenth of the value or if we go by, uh, you know, half the value. This is increases, decreases of uh, 0.5 if we do this. So that's a general principle you find on many of these values. Uh, if we press and hold, then often you also see a reset to the zero value. So that's, again, a classic Skahoy interaction design that you find on many of our controllers. If you have followed us for years, you know that in, in the Unisketch universe, which is our existing uh, platform for years, we have many of these interaction design concepts in place already. So they are also available on Blue Pill platform that will work with the Red Komodo camera. So you'll be right at home if you uh, work with this integration. Color temperature up here. Let's just see where do we have it over here. I think we would be back to the color tab in the interface. Yeah, so here we have color temperature. It's currently, it says at, at 10,000 Kelvin, but the interface here is actually working with the presets. So you can see pre presets like cloudy, um, daylight, flash. These are presets that um, are suggested by, by red. If I click this button, then I go to the actual value and you can see that I am able to adjust this value down to the 
to to a a, a single um, uh, number here, like you know, really fine grained um, color temperature. Once again, if I move it quickly, I get some acceleration on the changes to the values. So you can both do really small and larger changes to the color temperature. If I click once again, I'm back to the presets, and as I now move the encoder, I will um, be able to browse through the uh, named presets that exist. Offset red, green, and blue are put into the home screen because we believe that these are some of the CDL, um, the, the color-related settings in the camera that you would care about mostly. So you can also access them, them other places. And uh, let's just quickly try to, to turn them up so we can actually see some changes happening to the image. Quite quickly, I get into uh, deep waters here. So I'll just uh, press and hold to reset these off again. And um, since that was definitely demonstrating that something would happen. But I want to bring you over to some of the other navigational menus on the RCP. So home screen is where you would go and have the most important things. And yes, you can customize that. So if you want to change what is on the home screen, you can do that. You can actually change everything. But the idea of the home screen is that some of the changes you can make there would also be possible to do and still maintaining the original configuration provided by Skahoy. Uh, but that's details for a later section in the video. If we go to exposure, we see exposure related settings like iris, which is already adjustable by the joystick. So you would probably do it down here, but we also for complete, um, yeah, for, for completion, we include it in the menu up here. Then we have a uh, display, uh, yeah, I want a PRE, um, it has a name and I know it's in here, display preset, right? So we have a number of values that are in this drop down in the interface. We have broken them out on an encoder for you right here. You can see it follows along. Highlight, um, highlight roll off right here. Once again, we have these five values. I can change between them on the RCP. Uh, sh so that's documented. We have low contrast, medium contrast, and so on for output tone map. Let's just try this one out. You see the values are changing by this encoder and they also do in the web interface. The exposure adjust, we just looked at that. We have the ISO speed already documented. And ah, there you have a, the setting between time and angle. So I, I make it, um, we also broke it out here in the exposure menu. So if um, you did not know about us being able to change this value by pressing the encoder in this case, then you can also do it directly there. Now, if we go to the color section, you see enabling and disabling the CDL is a, a setting that you find on color page one. We also have color page two down here, but on number one, we have offset red, green, and blue. So let's just uh, work with this a little bit once again. Let's see if we can hit something that we like. Um, I am not a shader, right? But uh, it's a good thing I don't get paid to really shade cameras but we see the values in the display right here now for uh, offset red green and blue and they are also on the home screen as i explained so we thought that they would be great to break out right there color temperature as we have on the home screen is also found in here so in fact if you look at it the color one page has on the top row the same things that you have on the home screen on color two, we have access to power red, green, and blue and slope red, green, and blue. So now I'll just turn the knobs again to demonstrate to you that this makes a change to the image. And I'll do the same here. Exactly where you would want to tweak these, you would be the expert because you own the camera and you know what to do with these numbers. They are reflected on the color page here of the camera. So you see that all these CDL related values that you find right here are provided on the RCP with the same resolution of digits. And if you press um, the encoders, then you get to uh, quicker uh, adjustments of the value. If you press here, then you have more fine grained adjustments. So that was the color menus. And then we have saturation out here. I think that that parameter is found up here on the top. Um, is it true? Saturation. Oh, no, no, no. It was down there in the bottom, but there you go. And by the way, if you want to do that change in the web interface, you also have it reflected on the RCP right way, as expected, I would say. Uh, tint is one setting that we have up here on the top. So there you see tint being right here and that value can also be changed on the RCP and in the web interface alike. Great integrations are when manufacturers like RED make a camera or a product 
that gives us two-way communication. You see how, the, how important that is, that we are not setting things in the blind, just sending it over, but we can read it back from the camera so that we can have this two-way communication like we experience right now. That's really um, what we are going for and what we should see all manufacturers go for in their um, products when they make communication protocols for control. In the audio section, the RAID camera has some audio features and you'll be happy to know that we can also control those on the RCP like we can choose the audio source uh, between those two settings. We have internal and external. So there you see the external um, audio sources being set right now. We can change that to internal and so on. We can link uh, left and right of this. So if I fold this out, you can see here uh, being able to um, link them on and off is this little checkbox down here. And if I link them, then I can, um, if I turn off the link, I can adjust them separately as you can see. But if I turn on the link, we see, we see that the values are synchronously um, adjusted in parallel. So that's true for both internal and external audio source. So that's also included on the RCP, even on an RCP. If you wonder what the top buttons up here are, then on Blue Pill, we usually make color presets out of them. Uh, actually, they are often also a camera selector. So if you hold down the shift key on the RCP, you'll find that this, this can select between cameras. In this case, camera one is selected. But generally, the direct access you have is for color presets. So if I go to the home screen, I want to show you that I can recall some presets. And now you can watch the image from the camera. So when I press here, you'll see that I'm recalling one preset of the camera. And now I press on the next button, I get a different toning. And then I press on the next one again, and then yet a different toning of these parameters. So what gets saved in the preset? Well, we have we, we can actually pick any parameter, but out of the box from Skahoy in our default configurations, we have included all the color settings. So basically what goes into a preset is everything you find on this page and on this page. But it is extendable because the internal engine of presets, this is a preset engine in the RCP, that engine can be configured to include or exclude parameters just as you like it. So there's flexibility there, but out of the box, we want to provide a working default for you. And that means all the CDL parameters that you find on these two pages right here. If you want to store such a color preset, let's just do that. So uh, we, we play a little bit more with these uh, parameters. Um, I'm sorry for making them. Yeah, OK. Looks like my son's uh, room at home when he has all his LED lights uh, on, then <laughs> it sometimes gets crazy like that. So to save a preset, it's really easy. You just press and hold any of these banks and then it gets saved after a second. So now I can change between this and this, the one I just created. And now let's get back to real life. So there we go. All right, so that was basically showing you how the whole menu system of our RCP works. And you'll find the same pattern true for a lot of other uh, cameras. We are looking a lot forward to uh, demonstrating the V-Raptor camera. You will be able to see the same structure in the menu that I've just shown you right here. What else do we see? Apart from the amazing joystick with the display on top here, we also have the ability to record, to start and stop recording. This is an example of something that came as a customer request. So we already were working on this and then customers would come to us and say, well, it's great what you did, but we need recording. Can we have recording from remote location? Yes, you can. So we actually put it right here on this button. I'm now recording on the camera and I see the button is lighting up red. So that's great. And uh, right here on the RCP. I also have panel lock. Again, this is actually not linked to the red Komodo configuration, but it just means that if I push any of the um, the buttons and the joystick and so on, nothing is going to happen. So I can then unlock the camera here once again. And um, th th so that's a, a um, RCP generic function. And um, then what else do we have? We have a white balance, um, sorry, auto white uh, balance push uh, button right here. And I mentioned that we have the shift key. This is also expected on every RCP that you uh, will find coming out with the blue pill. So if you are looking whether this RCP is useful beyond the red Komodo cameras, you can, you can be absolutely sure it will be. It will in fact support 
basically every camera we can control. We have configurations that are made in such a way that it is reusable across our products. And it means that a configuration on one of our large PTC controllers will also be available here and vice versa. So um, the RCP and the way it's built with the menu structure and so on is generally available. This is also why you see a few things are not populated here. Like this button seems to have no function. This button seems to have no function in this context. But that's because depending on camera, we would usually use that for other things. In this case, we have not been able to um, decide for you what you want to control as Master Black. So usually we have this associated with Master Black and also the ring on the joystick. But that particular concept does not apply on a Red Komodo camera. And if you think it does, then you are free to put that parameter on that button yourself because you can change the configuration. Thanks for watching today. If you want to learn more about this configuration, then please contact our sales division. They will be happy to tell you about how you can get your hands on this integration. And I also want to invite you to follow us on YouTube and social media channels, because this is where we'll publish many more news about Blue Pill and Reactor. But stay tuned on our channels and you'll be the first to know.